You're trying to deploy an application into a Kubernetes cluster and need to pass it some sensitive information such as an API token or an SSL certificate. In the next five minutes, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that, taking advantage of Kubernetes built-in secret management. Hey team, Sid here with DevOps Directive, where it's my job to help you level up your DevOps and cloud infrastructure skills. I don't want to waste your time with a big preamble, so let's get right into it. Nearly any application doing something more complex than just printing out a hello world will have some sensitive data needed to configure it. Luckily for us, Kubernetes has a primitive designed exactly for this use case, which is aptly named a secret. These secrets consist of key value pairs. For example, it could be an API token or an SSL certificate. There are also a few different types of secrets. The first is the opaque type, which allows for arbitrary user-defined data. There's also more specific types, which have some other requirements and validations applied for their corresponding use cases. For example, a Docker config type secret should be used to store credentials for a Docker registry. For the remainder of the video, all the examples will refer to generic opaque secrets. How do we go about actually creating one of these secrets? There's two main ways, which I'll walk through now. First, we can define a YAML file just like any other Kubernetes resource. This file will specify that it is of kind secret, defines the name of the secret within the metadata, and then contains the key and value of the secret within the data portion. One important thing to note here is that the value field looks a little bit different than it did before. This is because the value field is encoded in Base64. To encode your secret, you can use the Base64 command line utility. You'd echo out the token with the dash n flag to prevent it from including a new line. This is important because white space and new lines can cause your secrets not to work properly. Then we pipe it into the base64 utility and get the encoded string out. To create the secret within the cluster, we would then run the command kubectl apply dash f for file and then the name of the file where we stored the configuration. Kubectl also supports a slight variant that doesn't require you to create a file which is convenient since you likely wouldn't want to store your secrets in a plain text source file anyways. The command to do this is kubectl create secret generic, the name of the secret, and then there's two different options. You can do from literal, where you pass the key and value as literal strings into the command, or you can do the from file option in which you pass a key and then the path to the file on your local system. Both of these options, from literal and from file, handle the base64 encoding for you, so you can pass in your secret without having to encode it first. Okay, great. We now have the secret stored within Kubernetes. How can I actually access it within an application? There's two main methods for consuming secrets within Kubernetes. The first is to inject it as an environment variable inside the container. When defining the pod or job spec, we can use the env key and indicate that the value should be pulled from a reference to that secret we created earlier. And then it references the key value pair to extract. Here, we're telling the pod to find the secret named my secret and specifically the value corresponding to the API token key within that. It then gets injected as the environment variable API token within the container. The application running within the container can then access it using something like process.env.api token for JavaScript or os.environment.get API token for Python. The second way to consume a secret is to mount it into a container using a volume. This method works great for applications that are designed to consume sensitive information from configuration files, such as Nginx reading an SSL certificate. To do this, we need to configure two things. First, we declare a volume within the pod specification referencing our secret. Next, we create a volume mount within the container specification. The name of the volume in the volume mount must match the name of the volume where it was defined, and then the path is where within the container file system the secret will be located. Each key in the secret will become a file containing its corresponding value. I know what you're probably thinking. Great, now we know how to create and use Kubernetes secrets. What else could we possibly need to know? I want to call out three potential gotchas. In the Kubernetes API server, the secrets are stored within etcd, the distributed key value store containing most Kubernetes configurations. If you're managing your own cluster, make sure to encrypt this data and set up role-based access permissions to limit access to those data. Second, as I mentioned before, secrets within a YAML definition file are Base64 encoded. This is not encryption, and those files should be treated as sensitive and not checked into version control. Number three, 
you still need to protect your secrets within the applications using them. For example, don't log them out and don't send to an untrusted third party. Hopefully now you feel confident about how to manage your application credentials using Kubernetes secrets. If you still have more questions about general credential management, I would suggest watching that video in which I walk through the five different levels of credential management, ranging from beginner to expert. Also, if you made it this far into the video and you aren't subscribed to the channel, why don't you go ahead and fix that? It only takes a second and it really helps the channel grow. That's it for today, and remember, just keep building.